Time now, 6.30. Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape! Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight, we escape into the mind of a man who has been sentenced to die. A man who attempts to refuse the bitter fate society has imposed upon him. As James Poe tells it in his seething tale of violent death, present tense. Starring Vincent Price. away, and the hills beyond below the stars are black and sharp, dead hills, dark sky, cold steel below my feet, cold as the face of the officer at my side, cold as the cuffs which link my arm to his, which join us on this journey to the prison where I die. Want a cigarette? No. Go on, take one. No, I, I don't use them. Oh. Has this happened to you before? What? Being handcuffed to a murderer. Has it happened to you before? Sure, plenty of times. To an axe murderer? Yeah, there's nothing special, brother. Lots of guys axe their wives, lots of them. I could have escaped after it happened, but I didn't, and now it's too late. Late. Late, ever too late. Never too late, too late, too late. Escape. Escape. If the train were to be wrecked, if the detective were to be killed... Late. Late. The sweet escape. The light escape. The crash escape. No! Oh, no! No, no! The darkness. Where am I? The cars must have gone down the gully. No lights and the people in pain. This thing fastened to my wrist went halfway through the glass of the door. Keep back. Keep back from his blood. I, I... I don't seem to be hurt. No broken bones. Escape. Now the, the key in his pocket, his bloody pocket, and the cuffs are off. His gun and the wallet. His face. His face is gone. His own mother wouldn't know him. I'm free. Fire. I must get away. Here, my ring onto his finger. There, that completes it. Right, number is 53 from Bakersfield. Now arriving. Please claim your luggage is secured. Taxi, mister. Yes. Where to? Up Beverly Glen, above Sunset. I'll show you where. Gotcha. Read about the big train wreck? Yes. Understand almost a hundred were killed. Here you are. Keep the change. Thanks. My home. It looks so small, so shabby. No one took care of it during the trial. No one cared. No one. No one cares now, but that's good. I like that. I'll be alone, and I won't let the neighbors see me, and I'll sleep and figure out where I'd go next. The light. Someone's in there. No, it can't be. She's dead. I know she's dead. Want another bottle of beer, honey? Huh? Yeah, sure. It's cold. You bet it's cold. But, uh, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said a mouthful there. 
This husband of mine was never able to make me feel like this. Takes a man, baby. All he could do is sit around and write those poems all the time. We well, framed it so good that even he thought he killed you. <laughs> What was that? Mice. <laughs> oh, you're funny, you know that? You're real funny. Open the kitchen door so quietly and walk softly. <laughs> Here on the wall by the stove, the cleaver. Now that I hear something. Are oh, you nervous, baby? Yeah. Relax just a little bit. See them now. It is she. How did they do it? How did they trick me into imagining the murder? I I am innocent. Sweet me. That's what you are, sweet me. <laughs> Love her, man. The pig in his dirty undershirt. Soft, weak, white neck, fat on his arms. Pig. Grip the cleaver and walk like a he shall be first, soft, white neck. I... Honest, I hear something. What's the matter, sweet mates? What's the matter? Oh! You killed him! Yes, and now you. No! I was innocent, and I thought myself guilty, and now I am truly guilty, and never in my life have I felt so innocent. Like a nightmare, the confession, the conviction, the sentence, and now, once more, dark night, cold steel, the sound of wheels, just as I lived it before. Why, even the cold face of the silent officer at my side, hard, cold face, so much like that other face. Want a cigarette? No. Go on, take one. No, I don't use them. Oh. Has this happened to you before? Uh, what? Being handcuffed to a murderer, has it happened to you before? Well, sure, plenty of times. To an axe murderer? Yeah, you're nothing special, brother. Lots of guys axe their wives. Lots of them. But were you ever cuffed to an axe murderer who killed two people, two people at once? What are you talking about? My sin, my crime, what I did, I killed them both. Glam. Like, take it easy, brother. You only kill your wife. Just her, just one, that's all. Uh... for some days now. And beyond the barred window, the leaden sky bleeds sorrow on the barren land, the lonely land, the land beyond the prison wall. The sky was blue when first I came here, blue, so blue. And now it has become as the walls of my cell, of all our cells, dark, cheerless cells, these lifeless cells, these cells of men who wait to die, that wet sky, gray sky, cheerless sky. But it is beautiful. I have 12 hours left of life, 12 hours left to live. Beautiful sky, beautiful, beautiful, wet and fresh and alive. Oh, rather would I spend eternity at a well's bottom with, with but one patch of that to gaze upon than leave this life, than leave this earth, than leave this sky. But leave it I must. The God told me no man has ever escaped San Quentin's death row. Blocks and bars, guards and guns lie between me and the world beyond. No escape, not from here. But wouldn't it be nobler to gamble my life in bold attempt and lay it down in reckless resignation, eh? So, now to get out of this super-guarded area. Oh! Oh, God! God! Hey, hey, fight down, fight down, cut it out. What's wrong? What's the matter with you? Oh, my, my, my gut! Here! It's killing me! Your oh. gut, huh? Well, I'll call a medic. Oh. Now, as I press, you tell me where it hurts. They're everywhere in hell. Oh, all over down here. There! Oh, don't touch that place again! Call the ambulance. Right. This man's got appendicitis. Oh, do something. 
something. Well, what do I do? Why didn't they send somebody with you? The interns are all tied up. They're giving shots today. Well, he's acting kind of crazy. Let's get him over to the hospital block. In a hurry. I can't drive any faster. My windshield steamed up. So we'll wipe it. You got a rag? Yeah, here. You could use my hand. Okay, pal. Give him the handkerchief. Oh, my God. What the... Keep right on driving through the gate or the top of your head comes off. You won't get away with this. I will. I'm betting my life that I will. How far back is the prison? About 15 miles. At least that. Okay, pull over. I'm taking her from here. And you too. I want your money, your clothes. And then you can walk back and explain about me. Explain about him. They won't find the ambulance for days. Not at the bottom of that canyon. Now I... I cross the border on foot. And into Mexico. <laughs> Thanks, senor. Oh, thank you. Uh, say, uh, when does the next bus leave for Mexico City? At 12 o'clock, senor. A little card bought in a back room with no questions asked, and I become a tourist. Four days' growth of beard, and I become poor. An empty suitcase with a butterfly net strapped to its outside, and I become a source of amusement. A funny, dumb gringo... And who looks with suspicion on the funny, dumb, gringo tourist who is poor? Mexico City is beautiful, but not when you are hungry. Not when you are an American who is hungry. Americans aren't supposed to be hungry. What can I do? All I know is writing, the writing of poetry. There, there is one place I might sell some poems. Pollen. His magazine prints some English stuff. Perhaps... Well, why not? I have three pesos left. Buy some paper, a pencil, sit in the park, write, and storm the bastion. Huh? Yeah? Uh, yeah. Uh, that is good here. Uh, do you like them, Mr. Pollen? Well, I... I well, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, Lucida... I have some poems here. Oh, let me see. The river doubled, dreaming droppled, faster passion of my soul. Ah, huh? muy bueno. Yeah, yeah, that is just what I thought. You are too kind. The poet should read his own work. <laughs> that, that drips, sweet droplets. Passions, goblets, fate thy roll. Uh, yeah, uh, Lucita likes your stuff. A rare woman. And, and I like what Lucita likes. Aha. Uh -huh. She says we do a book of your stuff. Oh? So here's an advantage. Too much. Take it. Win the book. That it is. Right. Got the four? I'll get them. Your name is Smith. No good to doubt. So true. I'll make a new one. Please do. And so? Good day, and I'll be back. In 30 days. With the point. mountains, the desert yellow and red, my own, my native land. My advance money went for a new clothing and a round-trip plane ticket to Los Angeles and my new lease on life. In a small file under the eaves of the little house in Beverly Glen, there are poems, more than a thousand of them, poems which no one has ever seen, poems written in the evenings after work and Sundays. Now, with the beard and the hat and the glasses, no one will recognize me. A cane. I ought to carry a cane, too. Get the poem. Does someone live there in the house? Has someone bought it? <laughs> no matter. Get the poems and then get back to Mexico City. Hmm. <laughs> someone is living here. I wonder who. The hedge is trimmed. And my, my hammock. Someone's put on a new canvas cover. Fred, get the door. When you get it yourself, baby, I'm shaving. Oh, all right. 
Yes? Oh, no, 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 it can't be. Well, what do you want? Her face, it's Mary, but I thought I killed her. Who is it, baby? Well, what is it, mister? What do you want here? Uh, are you the lady at the house? Huh? Who shut at the door? Some creep with a beard. Yeah, I'm the lady of the house, but I don't want to buy anything. Well, what is it, Santa Claus? What do you want? Are you the man of the house? Yeah, I'm the man of the house. That's who you mean. <laughs> I'll say. So what of it? I'm, uh, I'm making a survey. I'd like to ask a few questions. May I come in? Well, I don't know. Ah, oh, let him. What's the difference? Thank you. First, your name. Name? Yes, please. Fred Sneed. Hey, where's he going? Mister, what do you want in my kitchen? The cleaver, Mary. Don't you know me? Mary. Hey, who are you, mister? Look close, Mary. <laughs> the cleaver. Put it down. Know me? Know the man you tricked into San Quentin? Oh, no, don't. Put down that... <gasps> you killed him! Yes, Mary. Yes. No! <laughs> Confession, conviction, sentence, transportation, and... Oh, again, again, the death cell as before. But when I came here, they promised I could keep the beard. They promised I could keep the beard. And it's gone. Gone. I can't remember when. What's that? Who's coming? Ready? Ready. It's time to go, my son. Time to go. You've refused my help up to now. But perhaps you'd like to walk with me. Rather beside you, Padre, than beside one of these mercenaries. My legs. The muscles quiver, not with fear, no, but with the desire to feel themselves moving, straining, acting... While yet there is time, I'm not afraid, but this body, I hate the thought of its being killed by these men, my beautiful body, soon it will be dead, cold, rotting, dead, it will rot. No, they must not do this to me. You must be brave, my son. My body, years I spent with the great corporeal master, the yogi, learning my bodily purpose, my bodily care, the use of willpower to control my body, the yogi... My teacher, yes. I shall use yoga. Suspend my breathing and become invulnerable to their gas. Suspend my body functions to the point of death and fool their doctor, of course. Oh, yes, the greatest escape of them all. And this time I must succeed. All right, here we are. The room is... So small. Somehow I had imagined it would be larger. And here is the chair. Yes, straps, hood. All right, now just sit down. And over there, the glass. Take it easy. Small pane with the dark faces seen dimly through. The witnesses. Now lay your arms along these. The whole room is That's like it. some strange like sort one. of time machine. Yeah. Machine for launching a man into another dimension. <laughs> so true. Yeah. I'd best yeah. begin to prepare myself. Relax. Relax. Must relax. It won't be easy. Have you any last words, my son? Yes, one request. Do not allow my poor body to be dissected or embalmed, but on the third day after my death, cremate it. That will be arranged as you desire. Thank you. God be with you, my son. Remember what Christ said to the two criminals. In this day shalt thou be with me in heaven. Now move your head forward a little. All right, put the hood down. There. Now when you hear the pellets drop into the air, so don't try any tricks. Just breathe deeply, see? Fumes don't hurt, see? You just cooperate with us. Make it easy on yourself, pal. You know what I mean? breath has 
the yogi taught me. And the lungs hold it. Body limp, all muscles, tendons, joints. Relax, all slow the bloodstream, lock the breath. Hold, hold. Slow, slow. Hold, suspend all bodily functions. Hold, fix the eye in. Suspended animation. Gently fix the mind on time. Ease the beating of my heart. Time as a picture on the screen of my mind. Slower. Slower. My perception is slower. The time seems to spin by now. Go slow. My heart. The ventilators go on, clearing the air of the poisonous fumes. Now the doctor will come with his stethoscope. I will my limbs to stiffness, my flesh to coldness. All right, it's clear, doctor. You can go on in. Well, let's see now. Perspiration ceased. Heart stopped. <clears throat> by the authority vested in me by the state of California, I pronounce this man dead. I will myself to consciousness in six hours' time. <laughs> dark here and cold, so cold, I, I must get up and see. Oh, the prison morgue, it worked, but I'm cold, so cold. What's this on my toe? A tag. It's dark to read it, but I know what it says. It has my name, prison number, time of execution, yes. And now to look around, because the next step. Must be played just right. And this should be it. A coffin crate ready for shipping. Some cadaver being returned to a sentimental family. Well, that ought to be just right. With him on my slab, my tag on his toe, and the most perfect escape of all time underway, here we go. I will my body to return from its state of suspended animation and to come immediately out of trance when next this coffin shall be opened. He's out for a while. This must be the workroom. Light hanging over the work table and there a locker. Ah, with a suit. Fine. And here in the in the desk might there not be some sort of ah, yes, here. A petty cash box. And it's quite full. And the old boy apparently doesn't believe in banks. <laughs> and now and now that Lazarus has returned from the dead. This newspaper. State line. <laughs> I was executed four days ago. Now I find myself resurrected in Indianapolis, Indiana. Los Angeles, California. This is Los Angeles. You can claim your baggage in the station or on the platform. I return to my home. Beautiful time to return home. My old hammock is there, and my flowers, my yard. Oh, 
The house is empty. The lawyer said he'd had it cleaned up. Oh, my books, my pictures. Here's my old pipe. I haven't smoked it in years. Mary didn't like it. But now she's gone. I don't hate her anymore. Tobacco's still fairly fresh. Fill the pipe. There's that detective story I never got to finish. Now I'll have time. Now I'll have lots of time. Time to smoke and read and write and rest. Time to get outside. Cool, sweet air. Wonder what kind of birds those are. My hammock. Oh, oh it's so nice. Light the pipe. And oh, relax. Wish I could remember what page I was on, but no matter. I can begin again. I've got all the time in the world. The rest of my life. Birds. The sun is slipping out of sight. Death of the sun. I read the sky. How soft those clouds. So lovely, so lovely. What's that? Oh, birds playing in the fish pond. Look at them. Happy birds. That hissing. The neighbor is turning on his lawn sprinkling system. Lie here and smell the cool air. Evening coming on. Sky grows darker. Lie in the gathering twilight. Death of the day, birth of the night. Sweet softness of the summer night coming. Soon the stars. Oh, it's lovely, heavenly. Just like heaven. Lie. By the authority vested in me by the state of California, I pronounce this man dead. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. Tonight we have presented Present Tense by James Poe, Starring Vincent Price as Roger. Featured in the cast were Charles McGraw as Fred Sneed, Joan Banks as Mary, Harry Bartell as the Doctor, and Ben Wright as Pollen. Also heard were Tom Tully, William Lally, Jeff Corey, and Paul Fries. Special music was arranged and conducted by Del Castillo. Next week. You are alone at the controls of an experimental rocket aircraft about to be hurled 40 miles out from the Earth's surface into the limitless boundaries of space, into a nothingness from which there may be no escape. Next week, we escape with Graham Doerr's imaginative and widely discussed story of a rocket pilot who receives the strangest and most terrible warning in the history of man, the outer limit. Goodbye, then, until this same time next week, when once again we offer you Escape. When Bob Hope visits Bing Crosby on Bing's CBS show tomorrow night, they'll be singing a duet called Have I Told You Lately. That's a good theme for Bing and Bob, for you know and I know that when the two lads get together, the gags about each other's shortcomings fly thick and fast. Tomorrow night, with National Sauerkraut Week as the springboard, Bing and Bob promise one of their most hilarious meetings. So don't miss the CBS Bing Crosby show, which is heard on most of these same stations. Now stay tuned for Pursuit, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, where Wednesday night is Bing Crosby night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.